Hello, everyone. Thank, Thank you, Chancellor. Thank you, Trustees. Thank you, Dean Madison, the Speaker Selection Committee. I want to thank my department, Computer Science, and my PhD advisors here, Henry Fuchs and Greg Welch. And on this Mother's Day weekend, I would like to extend my sincere thanks to all the mothers and grandmothers and great-grandmothers. And to the doctoral class of 2019, congratulations, you made it. If God's not a Tar Hill, why is the sky Carolina blue? <laughs> Speaking about God, at the Burning Man Art Festival in Nevada, I saw a phone booth that said, talk to God. Curious, right? Now, let's not get religious, but would you walk up and pick up that phone? Share your deep secrets, maybe ask for guidance. Two years ago, if you had picked up the phone, the God on the other side had a strong Indian accent. <laughs> and that was me. I spent days um, on that phone talking to, you know, fellow Americans I would never meet otherwise. And amazingly, they poured out their hearts out, sharing their dreams, but also their deepest challenges and frustrations at home, in the relationships, and at work. And they expected that somehow, if there is someone with a God's eye view, this honest, trusted broker could talk to everyone involved and can understand and guide them and even resolve those issues. And that experience completely changed me as a person and also as a scientist. Why did they trust me with all their dreams and their challenges? And I really became passionate about figuring out what would be this all-seeing, all-knowing view and maybe create a newfangled AI that can do the mediation for us out there. So let me share two stories today that they snuck up on me and they may also surprise you. One about trust and one about passion. First, trust and privacy has become very important for us. But such, a such an emerging trust-based AI may just be what we want, what we need to make the world a better place. And second is passion. And passion drives us to the goal. But the path to achieve our dreams may also be morphing in the today's age of AI. So let's talk about trust. You know, after graduation, you might want to go and go to the best sushi place here in Research Triangle Park. But would you want to go where everybody else is going? And, you know, cousin Jenny might suggest, you know, her dream sushi place, but who are you going to trust? You're going to look it up on, on Yelp. And uh, Uncle Joe might have his favorite route to get there, but on this crazy, you know, gra during this crazy graduation week, you know the traffic's going to be a mess. And you're going to open your Google map and look at the traffic, the reds and the greens, to pick the best route. Because all of us have a GPS with us, but Google Maps has the God's eye view of everyone, where everyone else is. 
So just to be sure, I'm not using God with any religious connotation here. But if you're using this global AI view for routine tasks like picking a restaurant and navigating through traffic, what about picking and navigating our personal dreams and personal passions? If you have chosen a path, if you choose a path, that's the same as everyone else will just have a massive traffic jam and no one will make progress. But if you just want to be a rebel and choose a path that's in the reverse direction, that's going to be a waste of your time as well. So, so that's funny. So does it mean that we, we have this God's view already with things like Google Maps that can help us decide the what, the how, and the when, the destination, the route, and the navigation. Now, God's view can be for something more than just looking at traffic. From microcosm to macrocosm and can indeed be a game changer. So consider healthcare. If we know the treatment plan for every patient in every hospital, their genomics, their medicine, their environmental, their behavioral, such a collective intelligence will allow us to create the best personalized treatment. But that should scare you because what about privacy? You know, things like GPS coordinate and the Yelp scores are uncomplicated because, you know, the car location and the reviews is, is not as private. But what about our most sensitive and confidential and private information? Would we be willing to share that with a trusted broker? And I know what you're saying. Some of you have already seen you know, some of the big social media and internet and telecom companies and the governments already have a very invasive view of our lives. And we have trusted them over time with more and more of our information about our lives. And frankly, the privacy record is not very good. You know, it's really not that good, so I agree with you. So we cannot trust some new fancy AI, uh, you know, for medicine, for example, that goes poking around and tries to harness, you know, patient data. You know, we care about privacy, we care about consent, compassion, and dignity of every individual. And of course, for society and businesses, there are regulations and there are trade secrets, and this just cannot be shared the way I'm talking about. So is it nearly impossible to overcome these data silos? How can we create this all-seeing, all-knowing AI without surrendering our raw private data? Of course, the upside can be amazing. I mean, just think about all the different things you can do. You know, maybe one of the things on your mind is, is dating, right? Think about a dating app of the future, which is not just for matchmaking, but this dating AI, this all-seeing dating AI, you know, it has seen it all and like a good friend knows everything that matters to you, but also what matters to everyone. And this dating AI could actually become your trusted broker, a trusted savant who foresees your dating success and also helps you navigate years, many years into your relationship, all without you know, annoyingly typing or surrendering your confidential information. Just think about that. So that's the kind of breakthrough I'm talking about, an emergence of a neutral, impartial, honest, trusted broker. And yes, there is a new breakthrough in science that allows you to maintain complete privacy of your, of your sensitive data and still create 
this all-seeing, all-knowing AI. And it can overcome this false dichotomy between the privacy of your data and the societal utility of that data. And we have, such, we have seen such breakthroughs in the past. This is like the invention of encryption, you know, 50 years ago that allowed us to do, that allows us to do banking and finance remotely today without showing up in the bank where, you know, just your face and your signature used to be uh, the tools to authenticate you. And now we can do all these things, you know, authenticate ourselves, keep our data confidential, and still use the banking and financial services. So it's that kind of breakthrough, like encryption. But what I'm talking about is a decentralized AI, a new AI that works across data silos. And my team at MIT and many others around the world are working very hard to solve this problem and have made tremendous progress just over the last two years. We call it split AI, splitting the data that you have and the collective wisdom that the trusted broker has. Your raw private data is smashed into unrecognizable bits, but the AI can learn from the aggregate of many such smash, built, smash bits to build a God's eye view. And in that sense, we are transitioning from an information revolution to a trust revolution. And if data holds the new truth, split AI may be the new trust broker. And frankly, any company that you encounter today that's holding and harvesting uh, private data will have to now rethink. And our norms, the society's norms, and even the regulatory norms on privacy are changing. And, and for these companies, their current business model is coming into question. At the same time, as we create this split AI, this all-knowing, all-seeing AI, we need to make sure that we bolster ethics and fairness and accountability and inclusiveness as this trusted AI is really here to serve us, although it becomes more and more powerful over time. Now, there are many ways we have seen democratization of our tools. Libraries democratized access to information, but they're like those old maps, which are static. Split AI is like the active traffic map I talked about, and they will, democrat they will democratize access to knowledge and wisdom. And the dream, of course, is that everyone, even the new graduates, have access to this God's eye view so you can, so you know the destination, the route, and the navigation to solve some of the biggest societal problems in justice, in poverty, in health, in food supply, in the environment, and more. And so this paradigm is disrupting how we can create a global AI from local knowledge while preserving privacy. We have to think global, act local, while keeping it private. So let me touch upon the second story about following our passion, especially when you have this God's eye view with split AI. And uh, you know, we got to be careful. You know what folks say about following your passion. Uh, comedian Stephen Colbert jokes that, you know, if we had all stuck with our first dream, America would be overrun with cowboys and princesses. So yes, we had to be careful. Now, I grew up uh, in a very modest family of mostly farmers, and I got an opportunity to get education here only because I'm the youngest of four siblings. And I can only imagine the sacrifices my parents and my three elder siblings made so can I can be where I am. And I still pinch myself 
just imagining where I am. Um, you know, when I was a teenager, I lost my mother, but my father was here during the graduation, you know, about 18 years ago, despite his poor health. And, uh, you know, after the graduation ceremony, you know, we went home and we, you know, we cried all afternoon uh, with joy. Uh, unfortunately, we lost him six months later, and I really miss him. I wish he was here uh, for my graduation speech. And I know many of you have come from, uh, you know, difficult backgrounds, this arduous journey. And, you know, I think for the parents, it's kind of your dream. It's the dream that has come true to see their child graduate from a top school like Carolina. And they just want you to make a mark. So follow your dream, but also know the what, the how, and the when of your dream. The destination, the route, and the navigation. Because it's just not about the goal of your dream that would be just a destination on the map. You also need a plan, a route on that map. And to navigate, you'll have to think global, like the active Google map that provides a God's eye view of your research field. Because GPS within yourself is not enough anymore. To navigate your chosen path, you also need to consider of the GPN, GPS of everyone else. And with a Carolina degree, we owe it to ourselves, our parents, our community, and to the world to do our part to make the world a better place. And as you commence your journey and you think about your destination, the route, and the navigation of your dreams, I want you to propel you with this reminder. Think global, act local. Think global, act local. Thank you.